How is it going everyone? I want to give you guys my quick thoughts on the Miasma Chronicles done by the Bearded Ladies, published by 505 Games. I want to thank them for sending me a copy of the game and... If you don't know, the Bearded Ladies also put out Mune Year Zero Road to Eden, so they are very much familiar with this tactic-style genre. But you look at Miasma Chronicles from a visual standpoint and the scope of the game, definitely a level up from Mune Year Zero Road to Eden. There are some strong elements to this game, for sure there are some shortcomings. It did release at a somewhat budget price point of $49.99. Given that these days games can get as high as $70, I don't want to say that this is a budget title, but it's not a $70 game, so you can take it how you want to. The game centers the characters of Elvis and Diggs. Elvis is the main character, Diggs is the main character's older brother. Elvis was sent to the town of Sedentary by his mama, and he's trying to find out answers on to who he is, why he is in this town, and it all is centered in this world that is engulfed by the miasma, this mysterious force that is at the heart of the story, and it's very much a narrative-driven game. The narrative is incredibly interesting from the sense that there's a lot of mystery and there's a lot of twists and turns. What I had an issue with it from a story standpoint was the inconsistency in the story. The game's about 20 to 25 hours long, a lot of side quests as well that can make the game a little bit longer. Uh, if you rush through it, you can play it a little bit quicker, but while there is a all this mystery and all this suspense throughout the game the pacing is the real issue especially the second half of the game it honestly felt like we were a little bit rushing to the finish line and some of the elements towards the latter half of the game I don't want to give away spoilers uh, just really jarring in how they were executed so that's a little bit of a bummer the world that they've crafted here has a lot of promise and if they want to do more with it the potential is certainly there but for the core of the story here the inconsistency and the pacing really Really was the issue. As far as the characters themselves go, again, Elvis and Diggs are the two main characters. If you've ever watched a shonen anime, Elvis very much has that kind of style. I think if you do play this game, most people are going to say Diggs is the best character. He's humorous, he's got a lot of great lines. And I just found him to be a great character. But um, Elvis's character development as well. We talked about the inconsistency. And if you're familiar with a shounen anime, character development is like a very big part with any main character. Elvis's character development just seemed so inconsistent as well and so jarring by the end. I don't want to get into spoilers, but that was a major issue from a narrative standpoint. But if we shift on over to the gameplay, which let's be honest... For what this game is, tactical RPG, that is why you're getting into it. And what I liked about this game, the tactics gameplay is your standard tacti uh, tactics gameplay, but how the maps are designed really does open opportunity for different ways to tackle the game, especially we're going at it from entirely a stealthy approach. You can get silenced weapons and you can st uh, start trying to pick off enemies one by one, and there are sections you can completely avoid entirely, or you could take out all the enemies silently or even a little bit in between where you can take out a large portion of the enemy silently and then that makes the overall encounter so much easier and figuring that out and sometimes it was an instance of you had to restart the game figuring out what is the best course of action do you throw a distraction item here to move this enemy here go for a silent kill there or do you go for an all-out guns blazing approach which the all-out guns blazing approach really isn't gonna work at the higher difficulties and what you'll notice if you played this game at launch is that this game was very difficult. Now, from what I have seen, they've actually patched the game a little bit just because the issue of difficulty was something that very much everybody was bringing up. There was a patch that dropped on May the 30th, and it reduced a lot of damage with some balancing fixes. The game can get incredibly, incredibly challenging, and that's just on the standard difficulty. If you're going on the hardest difficulty, I'll pack a lunch because that is going to be uh, a very big undertaking. And that will lengthen the game quite a bit, uh, which again, as I mentioned, 20 to 25 hours long, but there's a lot of side quests available. By the end of the game, me not even doing all the side quests, I was pretty over leveled uh, comparatively to the recommended levels of the mission. So that was a little strange as well. And as you do level up each character, which there is a shared experience pool, you'll get skill upgrade points, and the upgrade system is pretty limited. There's only a few upgrades you can really pick from, but uh, they do give you extra abilities, which you'll definitely want to utilize those abilities, and you can reset the abilities and go uh, with whatever abilities you want at any point of the game, so that's quite nice, and that will help you if you think you put points in the wrong area, you can always reset and then try again, and that makes, you know, retrying missions relatively easy as well.
But I still found the game to be relatively challenging the whole way through. Sometimes a little bit frustrating, but uh, usually with a little bit of repetition in terms of figuring out different angles and ways to approach situations, you can figure everything out no problem. I have to say from a visual standpoint, the game is very, very easy on the eyes, and there's a lot of variety in the different areas. The areas do uh, have a lot of this murky look going on, this darker look going on, but there's enough variety where there are a lot of areas that are unique in their own way. There's not a ton of areas in terms of quantity, but enough overall, and exploration is a part of the game where, you know, you might find a key card here that'll let you get access to this door over here. You'll get some cool items. Nothing too crazy, but a nice added layer to a tactics game that I did appreciate. Overall, My Asthma Chronicles is a game that I enjoyed. That $49.99 price tag is a little high. Um, I would say that if you're a big fan of tactics games, there's so many options in the market these days. I would wait for this to go on sale. Like, at $29.99, perfect price. $24.99, perfect price. Like, right around that range. $50 is so close to a top-tier premier release that I can't recommend it at this price. But let's say, you know, by the fall, if it's down to $30, $25, $25 and you're a fan of tactics games, uh, this is one worth checking out. And from a price point standpoint, to the naked eye, you could see it as, hey, this game is as technically, uh, technically impressive uh, as some of the games that come out however when you start assessing elements like the voice acting some of the voice acting isn't great and there is some janky animations and things like that you know a lot of strong elements technically but definitely some shortcomings as well but overall enjoyed my time with my asthma chronicles wouldn't pay 50 dollars for it but once it's down to 25 30 hopefully they continue to patch it and really interested to see if bearded ladies is going to continue investing into this world it didn't seem like this game did gangbuster numbers from a commercial standpoint but there's a lot of exploration that could be had even when you got to the end of the game and you see how the game concluded there's a definite direction they could go whether it be for post game content uh dlc packs or even a miasma chronicles 2 so we'll see if they ultimately do that that's gonna do it for me sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.